classical mechanics time, let's do an actual real line integral. Uh, so this is a made up function, uh, but I think you'll help us see some of the delicate uh, details when doing a line integral. So I want to find the work done. I'm going to use work because it's a, it's a work as a line integral from A to B. Uh, with this is my force. The so force is cy negative cx. So it has a the x component depends on the y. The y de component depends on x. I put a c there because I, I felt bad, right? Um, I can't just have y x because the units wouldn't work out. So I put c is one newton per meter. So this will be in, in units of newtons. Yay. So again, we have work as the integral from a to b of f dot dr. We're going to do that. Uh, but I want to go ahead and show you what this function looks like. It gets a good idea to kind of like map this and and since I just did a uh, video on quiver plots in Python I made a quiver plot of this vector field so we can see what it looks like so I'll switch over there and just and just see that real quick and I already did it I know if that's bad I don't know if that's bad but so here's a <clears throat> let me just show you real quick what I did so up here you import you have to import numpy uh, numpy you call it what you want and uh, matplotlib pyplot because uh, the quiver is part of matplotlib.pyplot Right here, I just have uh, this x is makes a number of points between negative two and two. It makes ten points between negative two and two, and so I need I need the points so I can find out where to plot the quiver plots, and then I do the same thing for x. So I go negative two to two, negative two to two, and that's my space. So I have a grid of points, and I make that grid with mesh grid. So np dot mesh grid um, takes those two sets of x and y values and makes a grid out of them. Uh, now, once I do that, the, the beauty of this is I can define my x and y component of my function by just saying this, right? I can say f the x component's y, and it's going to do all the x f's for all the points, and f y is negative x for all the points, and that is plot. So I need the x coordinate, the y coordinate, the x component of the vector, the y component of the vector, and I get this nice fancy thing. So we're going to be going from like right here down to right here. And so, so the, the, inter the, the direction and magnitude of that force changes, and it's pretty important. Um, <clears throat> just so you know, if you want to make more vectors, you could change this to, just to show you how it does indeed work. I don't think that's necessarily better. And it looks tilted. Uh, let's do this back to, let's do, let's do eight. Let's see what that looks like. That's nine. And that looks a little bit better. Uh, it looks tilted because of the way it, the points are at the beginning of the arrow and so in order to show down arrows, you have to, it looks a little bit different, so. Okay, let's do this integral. I pointed over to the paper. You can't even see the paper. I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, <clears throat> so I know f. I need to do f dot dr. If I use Cartesian coordinates, which I am going to do, then dr is the vector. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna write, I write my vectors like this, x component, y component, z component. dr is gonna be dx, dy, dz. Now here's the thing that I always get uh, confused about. If you say, oh, I'm going from A to B, wouldn't dx be like an, like an angle down? No. The, the angle down and the path and the points, uh, well, you'll take into account for the limits of integration. But d, if you're doing an integral, then this in Cartesian coordinates, that is dr, period. Okay. So let's go ahead and do f dot dr, because we're going to integrate that. So if I do the dot product between these two, I get cy times dx, cy dx, negative cx dy, and then zero. Okay, so that's a scalar value, and I can actually integrate a scalar thing, right? That's really nice. So now let's put this in our line integral. Work is, I'm just going to put it a to b, and I have two pieces, so I'm going to write this as two things. C y dx minus the integral a to b c x dy. So you see we have a problem here. This is an integral over x. I have a dx uh, element there, and this is an integral over dy. But I have a y there, and I have an x there. So I need to do some some switcheroos here. Um, and this is where that line comes into play, right? So I want to define uh, y as a function of x along this line. So let's get the equation of that line. So I can say y equals mx plus b. 
So this is an easy way to write it. What's the slope? Well, the slope is going to go uh, down 2 and over 2. So m is negative 1, negative 1. And then the y-intercept is 2. So if I write y equals negative x plus 2, that's the equation of my line, right? Just double check. If I put in x is equal to 0, I get 2. If I put in uh, x equals 2, I get 0. Okay, so that does work. So, but now I can substitute this in right there if I want to. So let's do that uh, for this integral. So I say a to b, c times y, but y is negative x plus 2 dx. Oops, you can't see that. Sorry about that. That's totally my fault. Uh, and then I have this one. Now, right here, I actually have two options. I could solve this for x and plug it in right there, but I'm not going to do that because I don't want to. Okay. Instead, I'm going to take the derivative of this. You could do it the other way, and you should, just to see you get the same thing. I can take the derivative of this. I get dy equals negative dx plus 0. Right? That's the derivative. So now, right here, I can change my integration variable to dx. So I get negative a negative. So I get plus. It's all in the same integral now. Cx dx. You see how I did that? So I changed the dy to negative dx, and I got rid of that. Now it's all in the same integral, and they all have dx. So that's kind of cool. Okay, now we can integrate that. So let me write down my function here where I'm at. So work equals the integral. And now I'm going to, since it's in terms of x, I'm just going to write this as uh, x equals, I'm going from a to b, x equals 0 to x equals 2 of c negative x plus 2 plus cx dx. So I, I, I brought those two terms together. Uh, and so now we actually have, actually this is going to, I shouldn't even fact, okay, let's, let's just write this as uh, the integral negative cx plus 2c uh, plus cx dx. Those cancel, and I get uh, the integral from x equals 0 to x equals 2 of 2c dx. That's not too hard to do. Uh, I get 2cx from 0 to 2, so it's going to be 2c times 2 minus 0. So if c is 1, I get 4 joules, technically. OK. I kind of want to do this numerically um, for the heck of it, and just see if we get the same thing. So how do we do this numerically in Python? So here we have, we have our uh, start point A. Now we have our start point B. What I'm going to do is get the vector dr. I'll call it delta r. Right? So I can get this vector r like that. r is going to be uh, rb minus ra. Right? So it's the position of b minus position of a. That should be easy to do. And then I can say delta r is going to be equal to uh, dr r hat. So I can pick a value for dr, how much I want to step, and move down there, and then I'll know delta r. Now what I can do is say, well, I can calculate f. It's just my vector, uh, c, y, negative c, x, 0. I can take the dot product between these two. And this, what I'm doing is I'm assuming that the force is constant over that distance. And I can calculate the little bit of, of work, dw. So I'll call it delta w is f dot delta r. And then what I do is I just move to the next little piece and I do it again. And then I move to the next piece and I do it again. And so I'm going to do that as long as my x value is less than b. Or I could do y value greater than b. It doesn't really matter. Okay. So that, that's the plan. So let's go ahead and do this in Python. I'm going to use, I could use Jupyter, but I'm going to use GlowScript because I like it better. Um, and let's just do this integral. Okay, so switching back to Python. Here I have, this is GlowScript. Okay. <clears throat> so, 
uh, let's say c equals 1. Um, I could define f as a function, but I'm just not going to do that. So I do need to start with my position vector r. So let's say this, r a is vector, um, that's the location of a, that would be the vector 0 to 0, right? I'm, I'm going straight up. And then r b is the vector uh, 2 0 0, going straight that way. And then I can say uh, r is going to be the final position, r b, minus the initial position, r a. And then I can say, yeah, now let's say dr, let's do this in one step. dr, how far do I want to go? Let's say, let's say 0.1, uh, for, and we'll change it, 0 0.1 meters times the vector, uh, no, times the direction, which is going to be equal to norm r. That's my r hat. So now I have dr as a vector. I wrote it as a scalar. That's my step. That's delta r. That's actually delta r. Okay, now I need work equals zero because I'm going to calculate the work and then I'm going to move it up ahead um, a little bit and each time calculate the, the work done and add it to this. So I need some value to start with. Now let's say while r dot x is greater than r b dot x. Let's just, I'm just going to print out my x values just to make sure it works. So, oh, or my r. So let's say print r, just so you can see how it works. And now I'm going to move r, so I'm going to say r equals r plus dr. I think that will work. That should, yeah, it should move it. Let's just run that and see what happens. And nothing happened. Ooh, play. Well, r dot uh, less than. Sorry. <laughs> this is why you do these checks. No, it still didn't work. Okay, r. No. No, I need. Okay, I'm using r twice. I want to use r. Okay, so let's say r l. RL is the vector from the point to the other one, and then I need my location of where I'm at. That was my fault. That's on me. Okay. So this is going to be RL, and then I'm going to say uh, R equals uh, vector. Where am I starting at 0 to 0? Now it should work. Yeah. Okay. So it moved down, and it got to almost to 2. Okay. We, cool. Now I can say, let's calculate the work. D work is the dot product, oh, I need to calculate f, let's calculate f. So let's say f equals uh, c times vector, uh, I'm gonna use the, the position vector, so I'm gonna say r dot y, negative r dot x, zero. So I'm using r dot x as my position in the x direction, that's my x value, r dot y is my y value, I have my f, and then I can calculate dw is gonna be f and dr, and then work equals work plus dr, dw, and then move my position, and then my finally, I can say print w equals w joules. Let's see if this works. Four, okay, and yeah, I did a tenth of a step, so let's make that step size smaller, let's make it, uh, a thousandths, because what the heck, why not? And we get four. Okay, so in this case, that's the key thing that you need to remember here. When doing a numerical derivative, you need to know the actual dr is along that path. But in a analytical version, the dr is not that. The dr is just dx, dy, dz, and the path comes from the limits of integration and maybe changes in variable and stuff like that. So, okay. Um, it would be fun. I think I'll leave this up to you. Let me leave you a, a little homework. I'm not going to do it. Go over here. Is this a conservative field? One way you can check, just to kind of give you an idea, there's another way to check. But see if you can do the path along here to there. So what if you do that path? And if you want to try something else, what about the circular path? Okay, so I might do that in another video. I don't know. Uh, let's just see how I feel. But that's your introduction to line integrals. Oh, and you should also go back and try changing this. Instead of changing this to dx for the second part, uh, changing the variable uh, to 
using dy and changing the variable. We'll see if you get the same thing. Okay, hope that helps. Oh, this, yes, I'm done. <laughs>